Let's talk about love. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Just jumping on real quick to do a little chat on love, right? Um, just a little channeled writing that I got. And basically because why the channeled writing, right? And it's the direction that we're going in. Um, and it, it is important to help rise the vibration because obviously uh, you all know we're all going in to a time where it's going to be maybe not such a smooth year. 2024 is going to be, I don't want to say intense, but um, a lot of stuff, you know, we're still kind of going through the shift here. It's not over. It's not done. Um, and so the more that we can be in the, in the true state of love, kindness, joy, bliss, abundance, you know, going to help a lot raise the vibration energy of what's going on to counter you know the effects of what's happening and I did a little video on that the other day because I got a download on some information um on that but the more that we can be you know in the state of love uh, it's just going to help with the vibration and even though you know there a lot going on outside of the United States you know everything that's been happening um, it just kind of helps to, um, you know, equal out the playing field with the energy and vibration and maybe even tip it over more into the state of love. But generally, we're all going in the path of becoming love, right? And so as being in this reality here where we're at, you know, we've had a lot of teachings on different things, you know, being present, being awareness, being focused on what we're doing, what we're putting out into the world, how we're reacting, are we reacting on the um, the old consciousness, or are we going, you know, the new conscious, are we going to change the world, are we going in, we're going into the fifth dimension, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of information coming out, a lot of things being shown and revealed right and so it's kind of mixing up the the universe here to um give us a new opportunity to have a new playing field right to to be able to be a part of a new world in existence right in, in creation and you know with with love you know there's um there's different different types of love and what we believe love to be. Um, and it, it kind of talks a little bit about that, but it kind of just came to me today. A lot of things have been just dropping down in and I'm like, you know, I'm trying to write while I'm, I'm doing my daily activities, you know, things that I got to get done, trying to write it all down and jot it so I can come back to it and tune in and just write. Um, so just going to kind of read that what what I got, you know, from that um, for you. But it really came in because like this, um, you know, be, being love, being true, being kind to each other is really going to be important coming through this next year, especially, you know, it's, it's important every day to just be love <laughs> and to be kind to ourselves and to others. But, um, you know, when we go are going through these shifts, it's, you know, even more something we want to put to the forefront and just be conscious about what we're doing instead of adding to the energy of what's already going on, right? So if that makes sense, because when we go through these situations in life, these shifts and things, you know, a lot of people struggle, you know, and a lot of people, um, COVID, you know, there was a lot of stuff that happened during COVID and people were freaking out and people were depressed and people, you know, and it just kind of adds to it. And we're still going through stuff. It's not a lockdown anymore, but it's other things that are still going on that are being and coming up. And as we're going through these shifts and changes, because nothing can change unless you see it. Right. And, and, and when you see it, then you can make change. Right. So things are being revealed. But as we're going through that, love is a great way to navigate through that. Not only does it help other people, but it helps keep your spirits up, right? Because when you're kind of going and seeing all these things, and especially if you're being on the TV, watching all this stuff, and 
you know, it can become very overwhelming, you know, and kind of get people down. So the more we can stay in the vibration and just hold that, not just for ourselves, but others, you know, it's a great um, attribute to contribute. Okay. Um, but this is just what it says. It says, um, let's talk about love. So we are love and you, you can uh, get it. You can't get it from anyone. Right. And so basically it's showing and saying that you can't get it from love. It comes from within. So what if they don't feel like it? Right. So basically, um, and again, this is just my channel writing, so I'm trying to jot it down. Um, so it's not like a full thread of writing. It's just pieces of it at, at points. So you can't get love from anyone. You have to get it from within yourself, right? Because when you're looking at, <clears throat> you know, oh, my partner or my kids, like you can't get love to them if they're not in the mood of giving you love, right? <laughs> or attention and happiness and joy they can't just turn it on turn it off at your will right so that there is a delusion to think that you know my joy comes from them which is outside of yourself or my love comes from them from outside of myself it's within you everything comes from within you what you're seeing what you're feeling what you're experiencing um what you're creating right even what you're hearing what you're sensing everything is in in this space here with you nothing comes from outside of you right when you're projecting through your um your suffering or your past or your beliefs you're projecting that out from yourself onto whatever that is and you're going to get that back you're going to reflect that back to you right um and so that's basically what it's saying, right? They're not going to give it to you if they don't feel like it, right? So nothing comes from outside of you. Um, now, where do you, where do you, so then in that case, where do you find love, right? So that was a question. So it comes from within. Everything comes from within, not outside. Love is no difference. You only have to let it out, right? And so it's not something you let in, you cultivate your own love, which is who you are, not what you do. And what you do is a result of who you are. For instance, if you are in a bad mood, what do you do? What is your response to the world on those moments? Are you being loving to those who are suffering? No, you're reflecting your feelings. And even when you're, you're not or you don't mean it or realize it. So are you being loving to those when you're not feeling loving, right? And during your suffering, no, you're, how are you acting and responding when you're in that space, right? So we can't expect that from others, right? And so we can't be love if we're not going to be love. We can't experience or show or give love if we're not being love, right? So basically it's saying you can't be something that you're not. And so when you're not it, you're not love then you're not going to be able to reflect that out into the world, if that makes sense. So, and then it goes on to say, um, so you cultivate your own love, which is who you are, not what you do. So it's not something that you do. It's a result of what you are. We're all love. However, we've cut ourselves off from the stream of consciousness of love. So if you allow yourself to think of a person in your mind and somebody who you love, the love arises, right? And when we're in a comfortable space where we're feeling comfortable enough to allow that to come out, then we allow it to come out, right? And which is choice. And so it's just a choice of being love because we are love. It's just, we cut ourselves off from it. And then you've all heard of the emotional scale, which is uh, the distance from love, if you look at it, they use it in the way of how you get back to love or higher vibration, but it, it's true for where you are in the scale of love from source to where you are, right? From, from lack of love to love, right? And so it's like a scale that you're, um, that you're on, but you can use that in order to get yourself back to that space, right? That feeling. Um, 
and then they just kind of use it in a different way but it's very similar and then when you're when it's um you know because source is love when you're not love you're the lack of love so it's not really anything it's just the degrees that you are far away from source right and so the book kind of talks about that um and so you cultivate your own love, which is who you are, not what you do, because what you do is a result of who you are. For instance, when you're being in the state of love, then you act upon love, right? When you're in the state of unhappiness, you act upon unhappiness, right? If you're not consciously aware. Um, so for instance, if you're in a bad mood, what do you do? And what is your response to the world on these moments? Uh, you are being loving to those when you're suffering or reflecting your feelings, right? So whatever it is coming from within you is coming out of you, right? And so where are you from the space of love on the scale of from love to lack of love, right? And then even when you don't mean it or realize it, and so we don't question ourselves of who we are or what we're doing, and how we are showing up in the world, we are just going along with it. And when something happens, we respond instead of having the intentional practice of being love. So the intentional practice of being love is just consciousness, awareness, being present with ourselves. Where are we on that stream of love or lack of love? And where are we on that um, path? And so we don't question ourselves of who we are, what we're doing, and how we're showing up in the world. We're just going along with it in the flow of unconsciousness. And when something happens, we respond instead of having the intentional practice of being love. So being love is not only to certain people, it's being love to all persons, even the enemies that we deem and declare in our lives, right? Um, and so like love can come in many different forms right and so when it is a pure love it's a a love of no matter who it is you still love them right otherwise it's part of judgment it's part of um it's tainted it's, it's judgment it's only um certain people that i love um you're only worthy of my love you know things like that versus having source love which is unconditional right so there's the different loves basically and so when you only love some and not all it is a conditioned love for they are for they are they are my children oh so for instance example they are my children so i love them or um you know because they're nice to me that i love them they're kind to me so i love them Right? Why can't you love them when, when they're being unkind to you or when they're not your children, right? Why do they have to be something or someone to you in order for you to love them? That's like a conditioned state is what it's saying. Or this example, I love humanity, but I don't love this person. The person is humanity. <laughs> That's what humanity is. It's person. It's it's everything. It's um, It's who we are. Right, as a, a collective group of, of people, of persons, right? And so um, how can you love humanity if you don't love a person? Because a person's included in the humanity, right? If that makes sense. Because if you're going to love humanity but not a person, then you don't love humanity, right? So like these are just things that kind of are put here for to just think about it, contemplate it. And then that is not real love, pure love, true love. It's a Pharisee. And so to think it is so when it isn't. And so when you look to others to be love, it is a conditioned state of love. And so when you look within, what do you see? When you look within yourself, what do you see? Do you see love, right? When you're turning your yourself, when you're turning your reflection back on yourself and looking within, what are you seeing? Is what that's saying. And do you see love or do you not see love? You can only see, you can only see love if you feel it 
and you can only see it in the results of it when you are on the receiving end of it, but you can't see it per se as love itself because it's not expressed in a form. So we can never see love, right? But it's there. We feel it. We know it's there. We understand it. We see it from that perspective as a feeling of expression, but not as a form of expression because it's not a solid form. So <clears throat> In between your non-physical, which is sourced to this physical form, you have a lot of things in between there, which is different levels of solidity, right? And so emotions are a certain level of solidity to where it you can still feel it, but you can't see it, but it's still there, right? So it's along the line between... Um, like just being energy into the physical form, like the non-existence to the existence to um, no form to form, right? It's it's a it's a along the stream, the line there with that, and so basically that that's kind of what it's saying. Um, and so you can you can feel it, and you can see it as a result of it when you are on the receiving end of it but you can't see it per se as love itself, which is an expression of form. So you can also see love when somebody is being kind to you, right? That's an expression of the form, but you're not really seeing love. You're seeing a result of love that's coming from them, right? And so basically that's what it's saying. So it's not an expression in of itself, which is form, it's an energy of emotion which is moving through you. It's not even ecstatic, right? And so it's a result of being, of its being, not who you are trying to be because you already are it. So you already are love. You already are source. You already are one with all things. It's the allowing of it that we keep ourselves from in the experience only when, until we see something that brings it into our attention. Oh, I love that person. You know, they catch my eye, you know what I mean? Or I love that color or I love this. And it brings us back to that, that feeling, that sensation that comes within ourselves. It comes up within ourselves. It's not that thing that's given it. It's, it's the relation that I have with that thing that's sparking the emotion within myself because everything comes from within yourself. So like, for instance, when you're hearing something, you hear it within yourself. You don't hear it outside of yourself. The sound isn't outside of yourself. Because if you're listening to the same song and one person can't hear and you can hear, right, is an example, right? So because they can't hear, regardless if it's, you know, something wrong with their ear, or they just can't hear whatever, they hear a higher pitch than you or a lower pitch than you, and you don't have the same pitch at the same time where you can hear the same sound, you know, it's coming from within you. You're either allowing it or you're not allowing it, which is love, right? But um, that's just an example of everything comes from within you. Like you hear everything within you, you sense everything within you and nothing is from outside of it. It's just outside that reflects that in you that brings it up, right? And it is something that arises within you, not outside of you. That happens when. So when you allow it and when you open yourself to it, when you feel safe and comfortable in your own space to be in that space of love, otherwise you're cutting it off from it. So you are not very far from love, which is source. And so when you can be in the true space of love, you're touching source. So... Touching source is basically just saying you're one with source. You're in the same source. You're in the same space of source because source is love. You're, you're right there with it, right? It, you're not separate from it. Um, it's when we start cutting ourselves off from it that we become start becoming separate from it, right? And so that's where we start getting into all the other emotions, the, all the other things that are going on um, and how we're seeing and being in the world, right? But most have cut their selves off from love due to the experiences that we have been going through, which is the lenses of life. And so how that's how we see the world projected 
So it is hard to be in the space of true sense of the word love when we are on the receiving end of abuse or any suffering. And so we separate ourselves from love. And so because we can't see love, we don't know love. And so we are it, but we can only feel it and sense it when we are near it. Right? So you'll, you know when you're near it because you sense it if you're aware of it, right? A lot of us kind of just go along our lives just blindly. And then because we have the perceived um, conception, perception, whatever you want to call it, that, you know, in this human life, we have, you know, our family and these are the ones that I love, right? I have friends and that's a different thing. And that's a different thing. So we kind of categorize and individualize and separate and compartmentalize everything that we're experiencing doing with this and that, and this is who this is. And we put all this in the framework. Um, so we have a, a, a way to relate to it and understand it, right? So basically that's what that's saying. And so we separate ourselves from love. So because you can't see love, so you don't know love. And so, but you are love, but we feel it and sense when we are near it. And so it is telling us that we are where we are supposed to be, no matter where we are in life, right? And so being in that space of love, regardless of where we are, what we're doing or who we're with, um, is basically what it's, it's saying as true love. It's un untainted love, right? It's unconditioned love. And so it can be misconstrued about what love really is for we think it is what we are seeing outside of ourselves that brings a feeling within ourselves that it's a, a feel-good feeling that is arising when we think of something, being it or not, except for how you are showing up in the world. So many try to be loved but fail. Right? It's not, it's only it's it's only seeing, seeing that relates back to me to bring that up within myself. The experience of love. And so why? Because you can't be it if you are not it, which is letting it out, not letting it in. And so it is something you are not something you do or try to be. And so the saying, I am love, is just a reminder. It isn't making you into love. And love doesn't always mean a lover. It means to be yourself. Love is a, conv is a convoluted word and is expressed in so many ways and misunderstood. And many don't even mean it when they say it. It's just an expression of word on a feeling, an emotion that you may not even be aware that you're having based on what you're experiencing in your realm of being, which is either true or false, right? And so what we believe is love is not always love, right? So love is a purity in love. There's so many different levels of love. So you have love and then you have all different other kinds of loves, right? So it's not a pure love, right? It's the love that you have. And then if you think about it, every love that you have is different. The love that you have for your kids is different than the love that you have for your partner. Then that's different than the one that you have for your friends. And that's different than there's so many different kinds of loves. And then you have, you know, the love of art, the love of history, the love of music, and then this, all these different loves, right? And they're conditioned because you like it, right? And that's the only reason you love it because you like it. Now, if you didn't like it, are you going to still love it, right? No, it's all conditioned, right? And so when we are it, we can be it to the world. And so it all starts with you. And so why is this important? Because it's an infraction onto the world, which is a, re a reflection of who we are in the mirror, right? And what we are being and showing up into the world. And so everyone thinks you are millions of miles away from source when really you are it, which is pure love, but it's the amount of love that you give out that you're showing onto the world, which is a reflection of you, right? And so <laughs> you already are it. It's just allowing yourself to, to be in alignment with that energy and not have it broken down into different sectors, Right, depending on who it is or what you're doing and what it is that you're giving love to. Um, 
And so you cut yourself off from it by being something you're not, which is separateness. And so you can't be something that you are, that you are not. It is what you are not allowing within, right? And it's not that you're allowing it within. You're not allowing it within, which is out, right? You're kind of like, if you were to imagine your heart expands, right? You're allowing it out, right? Because you are all things. And the good news is that it is at will. And so you can choose to be love or not, which is an awareness of itself when and when you are not being it, which is love. And so, which means you are already there. You just have to become aware of it for you are of the liking, meaning to be like source because you are, right? And they kind of talk about that in the Bible. You're, um, how do they say it? In the image of, right? You're in the image of love. Not a man, not a human, not a person. You're in the image of love, which is source. Source is love. It's an intelligence, your intelligence. Your whole body is an intelligence, and it works on a certain system. Your heart is working, pumping, doing its own thing. Every part of you is an intelligence, right? And so that's basically what it's saying. Same meaning, right? It says you're of the liking, which is same thing as your, for those who are biblical, um, you know, you're in the image of, right? And so to the world, which is to be like them, which is good excuse to not be love, but it is not sustainable for we are all looking for love in the wrong places. So anytime you're getting love from places outside of yourself, it's not sustainable. I mean, it doesn't last, right? It's just temporary. Kind of like going back to the beginning of this conversation, you know, um, you're only going to feel loved when you're in that space. It's not a continuous love, right? And it's because it's not a true love. It's a conditioned state of love. Conditioned state of love doesn't continue to be right? It exists when you put yourself there. It's kind of like the waves in the ocean. Like whenever you're with your partner and you're having a great day together, and then all of a sudden you have a bad day together, right? Are you still in that space of love? Are you holding that space of love with that person, right? And so this is kind of what it's saying, like, why just do it with one person when we can do it with the whole world, right? Just be in that space on a continuous level of the vibration and energy within ourselves regardless of what's going on outside of ourselves or who we're interacting with just be love is basically what it's saying right and so what is outside of you is not a constant flow of love so we we feel lust when we don't have it but once we've gotten it or had a taste of it and we're always starting to seek it right which is to seek ourselves because love comes from within Right. And so we don't have it. But what we don't realize is that deep down, we have the power to rise love by just choosing it. So you can just choose to be love. You don't really have to do anything. You don't have to do any practices. Um, I choose to be love. Right. And, and follow up on it. Be conscious. Be in your awareness. Right. I choose to be love and feel the feelings. Right. Allow them to rise. Allow yourself to be open and choosing it. And so what are you choosing? You're choosing true love. Or are you choosing to show up in the world according to the world, the way the world is, which is a reflection, right? So you depict how the world is. You allow, no, you allow the world to depict how you are being, right? And that's basically being shut off to the world because when we allow ourselves to just to the flow of the world about how we feel or how we're showing up or how we're being in the world we're allowing the world to control us we're not allowing ourselves to be in the space we want to be regardless of how the world is being if that makes sense basically what that's saying right so are we allowing ourselves to be love or are we allowing the world to according ourselves to be a way the court the world is right it's not always easy to be in the space of love you know when there's just a lot of this stuff going on especially now you know, in this time, it's kind of hard to do that. Um, but it's a practice, you know, it's it's a choice to be practiced um, for uh, being love, right? And that says, because you are the world in love with itself, and you only see what you see, but you don't see it with the eyes 
but with the awareness of yourself. And so to start exercising it at the level of awareness that you are love is to let it out, not in, right? And so it's not allowing the world to predict uh, and tell you how to be in, and be in the world. It's allowing yourself to be and then letting it out, right? And so we can only be it when we are one with it. So let it flow uh, to yourself by allowing it and moving it out into the world by the way of what you are seeing and not judging, right? So um, just allowing yourself to be it and regardless of whatever space you're in, you know, keep yourself and maintain yourself in that space, right? And without judging yourself or others. And when you can do that, you are being and sharing love without even knowing it. And it becomes a natural not forced to not only those who you think is worthy, but to all of life. And that's basically the end of that channeled writing. So uh, just a little writing there to share. And thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, um, drop them below. Um, also email down there in the comment section down there. Um, and you can submit any questions you have and Thanks for tuning in. Happy journeys.